years and still talking, this is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Hey everybody, this is Alex and this is the Ramble. It goes until midnight tonight. And we go check in with an old friend of ours. You want to talk about a turkey? I got one right here, ladies and gentlemen. Larry Bubbles Brown. Hello, Larry. The doctor is in. <laughs> the doctor is in. Yeah, hi. What are you doing for Thanksgiving? Uh, just brooding alone. No, I'll probably go up to my sister's. And really? I don't really. Uh, I can't wait to, for the, the period between Halloween and the New Year's. is uh, so annoying. I want it to be over. Yeah, yeah. Well, we... we uh, uh, what are you doing? Well, we, we invited two... All we had were two people to invite to our Thanksgiving, uh, one of which is my friend Jack Garfine and Natalia, his wife. Um, and um, he's like 78 years old and just a couple of days ago wound up in the hospital with pneumonia. Oh, geez. But then we get a call from another one of our friends, and she and her boyfriend don't have anywhere to go, so they'll go pick up Natalia and Jack and come on over. So now it's up to four. And then, uh, let's see here. Uh, I, I, all I know is that is now eight people. And we don't have eight chairs for the dining room table. <laughs> <laughs> so, That's so, a good gathering. Hey. Yeah. I mean, it started out being nothing, and now it's turning into this, uh, this uh, um, fest, as it were. You know, so... I hope she's making a big enough turkey. Yeah. That'll be a, yeah. That's good, though. You got a lot of people around. I, a lot of people are, uh, if you're alone around this time of year, it can be horrible. Well, you, you remember when I lived in San Francisco and I was doing the show and everything, on Thanksgiving, I would make a turkey and just invite everybody over who had no place to go, you know. I remember that, yeah. Yeah, I don't know. You may have been there one year. I, I can't remember. I was. Yeah, yeah. So, and I enjoyed doing that, you know. And I made a pretty good turkey, I think. Uh, you did. You have surprising culinary skills. Yes, and yet I've never been able to cook a turkey since because wifey wife will not allow me to turkey turk, you know. <laughs> uh, no, you can't touch the turkey. I make the best turkey ever, and she's never had my turkey because I based mine in burgundy wine. You know, so anyway, um, uh, we're having we, what, what was going to turn out to just be two people, four people, and maybe those other two couldn't show up because he was sick is now turning into, you know, uh, dinner at, uh, at uh, the Salvation Army or whatever, you know, <laughs> with all these people. You know what I hate about Thanksgiving, though? I mean, I love Thanksgiving. It's my favorite holiday. Because really? it, Well, oh. because there's no religion involved in it. You know? It's just... it's That's just uh, there's, there's There's no stress of anything. You don't have to go out and buy presents. You don't have to have um, uh, shattered expectations. You know? It's just make a turkey, yeah. eat. If it's just me and girlfriend, fine. We make a turkey, we eat. Uh, if it's a bunch of people, we make a turkey. Everybody eats, but it there's n there's nothing about it that involves pressure except to get the turkey made, which is the easiest thing in the world to cook. And then you tell everybody else to bring the side dishes, and you don't have to do the yams and the da, but they, <laughs> uh, you know. But I mean, it, it's just it, it. You know, I hate Christmas. I just hate fucking Christmas. Christmas is the worst. Yeah, you know. Uh, and I'm I'm not too terribly fond of New Year either, you know. Um, sometimes we just invite a bunch of people over that we know. We, we used to invite Shecky and our friend Adrian and her boyfriend. 
And uh, Shecky can't come this year because Shecky, uh, uh, this is so, so a feat, is going to be in Antarctica. So, uh, wow! For what? He's taking a trip to Antarctica. So it's a trip that goes along uh, down around Tierra del Fuego and so on and so on, and then it goes out to Antarctica where you get get off for a day or so, you know. And freeze. That's pretty adventuresome. I guess, you know. Um, and, and it's costing him a fucking fortune. Uh, but he just, uh, you know, he loves taking these these exotic uh, trips places. He went to, uh, yeah, I was jealous he went to, where was Darwin? Uh, the Galapagos. He went to the Galapagos Islands. And mm-hmm. that's a hard one to go to because they only allow so many people in at a time. So that they don't ruin the environment. So, <laughs> so you have to. People go are so good. People yeah. ruin everything they go to. Now I was doing I was doing my uh, crossword puzzle the other day. Okay. Oh, I love those. Yeah, I mean, I, 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 I every time I'm on the toilet, I do a crossword puzzle. I have the New York Times, and I I go go back and back and back. I did all the Mondays ever. Okay. Now I'm going back. Mo- and do, Mondays are easy. I'm doing all the Tuesdays. And when I'm th- through with that, which will be in another year or so, uh, I will do all the Wednesdays. You know, I have done whole weeks. I mean, I've, I've gotten through whole weeks. And maybe not the Sunday. The Sunday is just, it's too big. You know? It's too, I don't like that. It's not necessarily hard. It's just too big. I like the Saturday one. Yeah, the Saturday one's supposedly the hardest. They, Monday's the is is the easiest. Tuesday Monday's the easiest. Then they start to get Wednesday they start to get a little challenging and Thursday and Friday are pretty hard and Saturday's the worst. Yeah. I I've actually gotten through Saturday. I'm one, I I decided to do one whole week once and I did it. But it took forever. Because Yeah, it takes me like two hours to do the Saturday one. There's, I think like uh Clinton can do those in like ten minutes or something. Uh, uh, John Stewart used to do the daily, the do it every day. I think he said in ink, uh, and he would do it in thirty minutes or under, no, yeah. ma- no matter which one it was. But you know what part of it is? You have to get to know the logic of the person doing the crossword. Okay. Um, the um, I'm trying to remember the you know it, 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 they'll either be with some one guy will be a punster you know another guy will it, sometimes they will always lead you in the yeah, wrong they, in the wrong direction or sometimes they'll have a theme and yeah yeah so it, it you know I mean I I uh, but I find it challenging and then as I go back sometimes they change the guy who writes them and so the logic changes. And you have to like get into a whole different logic. So, yeah, there was one a couple of weeks ago. The guy had this guy just had a totally different way of thinking than I do, and he was so hard to. I couldn't get that one at all. Yeah, yeah. So you know, I, but uh, I, I love. I, I think it's the only good thing about the New York Times is the fucking crossword puzzle. You know, that's all that's left. There was a documentary about it, by the way. Uh, there was at uh, Will Shorts, right? About Will Shorts, who is the editor, who, who does the is the editor of the crossword puzzles, and uh, they hold these co- crossword puzzle competitions, um, uh, where people have to actually fill them out on big boards, you know, uh, as they're going along. It it it. It, 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 it is. I think it is maybe the smartest game ever invented, and I include really? chess, I include chess in that. Well, because it, your your knowledge has to be vast, you know. Um, That's true. Uh, you know who uh, loved crosswords, uh, Merv Griffin, and he was always trying to come up with a game show that he could incorporate crosswords. And I don't think he ever quite got it. Uh, I don't think you could. I mean, because it's just too extensive, you know. Uh, uh, I th- I think he did try crosswords once. I think he did. I seem to remember. He it may have tried, but it didn't. It was didn't a terrible, terrible well. show. Terrible show. Didn't work. No, didn't work. 
um, which is amazing to me because you would think you could come up with something like that. But, you know, crosswords are very, uh, very interesting. Whoever invented that whole concept? I mean, they're not that old. They go only go back to the late 1800s, maybe early 1900s. Yeah, I think the New York Times had their first one about 100 years ago. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, so they're, they're, they're pretty, uh, and, they're, and they're tough, and, they're, and you got to be smart to do them. You know, it keeps my brain going because my brain is going. So it keeps my brain. Oh, me too. And supposedly this is good for us. So that's yeah. why I keep doing them. It keeps it active, you know. It's funny. I'm having the biggest problem with my memory now is, uh, and it, it drives me nuts. And it's the same thing with the girlfriend. She has the same problem. We can't name actors anymore. Wasn't he the guy who was in that thing? You know, and, and <laughs> yeah, which thing was that? Uh -huh. You know, the thing that was the thing? Oh, that thing. Oh, okay. We, we, in other words, we have no, you know, no real memory. Uh, and yet I can come up with some names that I go, how do I know that name? How did I remember that name? You know, but I did. So, uh, uh, you know, I, I, amazing to me. Sometimes I can come up with old actresses and things like that. People, w actresses from silent films. Here's one for you. Bet you never heard of her. Louise Fazenda. I uh, have not heard of her. See, I, you know, right? Uh, uh, how did I just remember Louise Fazenda? And I bet if I had Shecky here, he would tell me every film that Louise Fazenda ever made. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's, that's he a genius. It, you know, I don't know that we're, we call, it, it, we call these things. It, it, you say, "Oh, is he a genius?" No, he's very knowledgeable in a field, but I don't know if he's a genius about it. It's just that he was so involved with it that he culled every bit of information he could about that subject. So, is that genius, or is that being studious, or? Uh, uh, Whatever, I don't know that it, that it that it fits that category. You know, uh, I mean, he's very smart. I'm not going to deny that he's a very bright guy. But when you say is he a genius? No, I think maybe he's a savant. Okay. Okay. I, That's I, the difference. Yeah. And then again, I tell you, there is a certain thing that happens, and I don't know why it happens, where you suddenly gain information about a subject you never thought you gained information for. Um, uh, I'll give you an example. I was doing an interview one day with a guy who wrote a book about Western villains, okay, bad guys, you know, people who rob trains, shit like that. Mm -hmm. And he started talking about it, and I started naming names, and he said, boy, you know a lot about this subject. <laughs> and I then sat there for a moment and pondered why. I never studied it. It seemed to be that sometimes you go through life and there are certain things that, I don't know, you you just pick up on. Do you know what I'm saying? Well, you were always kind of fascinated by crime. Uh, was I always fascinated by crime? Yeah, you remember we'd, we'd always talk about serial killers and stuff, and you always knew a lot about them. And mm -hmm. Yeah, but, I mean, what happened was I never had any big uh, uh, thing about the Old West or whatever, but I think that every time I came upon something in the Old West, it stuck in my brain. It was like glue. And so there I was naming these Wild West bad guys to him. And so what about Black Bart? And what about, uh, you know, so-and-so and so-and-so? And, -so. and he's going, boy, you know a lot about this subject. And I went, I don't know where I got it from. I have no idea <laughs> where I got it from. And it's true. I had no idea where I got it from. It just... it just. You could be a savant. No, I think that there are things that you don't realize interest you that interest you. Okay. Now, I mean, you're, you're, you know, like, let me ask you, do you think, I mean, you're not dumb, but when I, I do you think you're particularly a genius? No, not, I think there's, 
I've read there's intelligence. There's like seven different types of intelligence, and you can have you can be smart in one of those areas and totally an idiot in the other. And I sometimes just feel like I'm really stupid in some areas. Like for instance, watch, watch this with Larry. Uh, we were in our lawyer's office yesterday, and we had to remember when we had a meeting where we signed the lease, and it was on uh, June sixth, two thousand eleven. And I said uh, that was a Sunday because the office was empty. Well. Uh, it wasn't a Sunday. So what day was it, Larry? What day of the week? Uh, June 6, 2011 should have been a uh, Thursday. No. Yeah. Oh, I'm off. I'm, see, I'm not, I'm, not good on, I'm not good after about 2000. Oh, really? Yeah. Why is that? Uh, it was, it should, let's see, it's, I can go back this way. Uh, let's see, June, so 11 and Seven twenty-eight would have been uh, eighty-three, so it would have been uh, a um, uh, Monday. You're right. Yeah, you're right. See now, now is that genius or is that being a savant or what is it that that comes from? Or do you just have a method? Yeah, I remember June sixth, eighty-three was a Monday because the, cal- the calendar is always the same every twenty-eight years. Mm-hmm. So, so I had to look at nineteen twenty eighty-three. Oh, I I see. So if you go to eighty three, you can figure it out for what it was. In, oh, every twenty eight years the calendar is the same. Yeah, mm-hmm. see, it'll repeat before that, but it's definitely the same every twenty eight years. Which, like, uh, we recently November twenty second when Kennedy got shot was uh, that was fifty six years ago. So that's two twenty eights, and that was a Friday. So. It was a Friday. Yeah, it was yeah. a Friday, wasn't it? Well, that a lot of people might remember, you know. But, uh, um, so, you know, I mean, so the question is, is, is Shecky a genius? I don't know that he's a genius, but he, he has a... Maybe just really smart. He, he has an area of interest where he knows everything about it, you know? Don't geniuses have to be like, God, I was reading about uh, <laughs> Bobby Fischer last night, the chess guy who was... Uh, just sounded totally insane in his personal life, but... Bobby Fischer, yeah, yeah, he was, wasn't he? Uh, yeah, I, just uh, wildly anti-Semitic. Oh, really? Oh. Even though he is Jewish. But... <laughs> You're self-loathing Jew. Oh, uh, it's just if you go look later, look him up on Wiki. I I kind of heard about that before, but I, I didn't know how bad it was. It was just incredible. Yeah. Wow. But I, I've never learned to – I have no idea how to play chess, and I think that takes a real type of intelligence to do that. Well, that's a skill, though. That's a skill. Uh, there is a certain memory factor involved in that you remember gambits that were done in other games. It's, it's, it, chess is something where you study it if you're going to be a big chess master. You study how other people played it. And you study particularly brilliant moves that somebody made. So you then can refer to those when you're playing the game yourself. And I, you probably have to, don't you have to look a forward so and uh, be mindful of every potential move the other guy makes? Yeah, and, yeah. It's so be a lot to care in your head. Right. Right. So, I mean, it, but it, it's, uh, it, it, yeah, he, um, yeah, yeah. But I mean, I, it, 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 I'm trying to think if it's a skill, like for instance, people say, uh, baseball, oh, he's a good athlete. Well, ba- baseball, as opposed to football. And the reason I don't like football, okay. Football is just brute force. There's no talent involved in it. Only the ability to, Take your bulk <laughs> and hurl it down a field, right? Mm-hmm. Meanwhile, I always said with baseball, what I loved about it is baseball's a skill. You know, you don't just play baseball because you're big and heavy. You don't play baseball because you necessarily can run fast. You, you're good at baseball because you're good at the skill. You can take that, if somebody throws a ball at you. And you can hit it really far, you know, based and upon your... supposedly the, uh, the hardest thing to do in any sport is hit a baseball. Is it really? Yeah. 
I, for me, it was. I don't think I ever hit one in my life. You used to go to the bat. Yeah, well, you've got a you, you got a round ball and a kind of a round bat, and it's very it comes at different speeds and it's, it's well, a lot that, going that, on. That's why when uh, girls play it, and uh, we used to play it in school, we used to play softball because softballs were large. They yeah, were easier to hit and but, slow. But I could never hit a baseball. They throw it at me, and I yeah. flinch. That, that's what would happen, you know. Surprisingly enough, I was actually a very good hitter, I, not a good fielder. Well, you you went the, to the I, ba- you went to the batting cages, if I remember. Yeah, I could hit ninety mile an hour pitching. So. Really? Yeah. And how how um, how how often would you go to the batting? Do you still go? No, I stopped going about God when we were back in the radio. But I used to do it then, and I was. Uh, Remember, I was pretty good. Yeah. Not to brag, but uh, but I, I was a horrible fielder in ba- in baseball, so. mm-hmm. and, a, and a slow runner. Yeah, yeah. I could never pitch either. You know. No, I couldn't. That takes uh, boy, that'll burn your sh- arm out. But. Yeah, but I mean, I so I I always had a I was always not a fan of baseball. They, they, by the way, that's another area in which I have a certain expertise is baseball. And really? I, and I, I've never been a big, a big, I didn't never have followed baseball. You know, some people follow baseball. Shecky listens mm-hmm. to every Yankees game. Okay. That's following baseball. I don't follow baseball, but somehow I absorbed all these little facts about the history of baseball. Really? Well, I, I loved it. Uh, Surprised me. I didn't think you liked it. I loved it as a kid. I've gotten, I don't like sports anymore, but I can, oh, I, I can name, yeah. I can name every World Series result for the last hundred years. Really? Okay. Yeah. Who won in 1913? Uh, last hundred years. We got to go start at 1919. Oh, oh okay. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Who won in uh, 1923? 1923 was the first year the Yankees beat the New York Giants. How about 1924? Uh, Washington Senators uh, beat the Giants. How about 1943? 1943, Yankees beat the Cardinals. You Four know, games to one. You know what I mean? I'm, we're all <clears throat> probably right now going, wow. But the fact of the matter is you could be lying through your fucking teeth. And I wouldn't yeah, know. Or you could. <laughs> I wouldn't know the difference. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to look it up on. Uh, let me see here. Uh, let me pick a year. Oh, uh, uh, nineteen. The year I was born, nineteen thirty-nine. Oops. Nineteen thirty-nine. Well, don't, no, don't, 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 don't say it yet. Nineteen thirty-nine World Series. The Yankee swept Cincinnati. He, let's see here. And the answer is uh, 1939 World Series, uh, New York Yankees against the Cincinnati Reds. Was that what you said? Yes, four games to zero. Oh, oh, Jesus Christ. Um, uh, Cincinnati Reds, I just say Cincinnati Reds, updates of a, a World Series. But it's, I can't, where is it? Uh, oh, oh, okay. Um, Cincinnati Reds, uh, New York Yankees, uh, game. Th- who won? Do you know who won game three? I don't know who the pitcher was. No, no, no the team. Oh, the Yankees won all games, all four. No, uh, yes, they did. Yes, they did. Mm-hmm. Yep, four in a row. Wow. You knew that four in a, in a row. Yeah. Okay. Then let's go to World Series, well, 1940. 1940, Cincinnati beat Detroit four games to three. Jeez almighty, where does that come from, Larry? That's, no, I mean, I can't, when I was a kid, I, I loved baseball so much. I grew up in Cincinnati, and uh, like in 1965, when I was a young kid and really into baseball, at the end of the season, I could have given you the score of every all 162 games for the Reds. And, and is this because you just because you? And, and I would have detailed information on every game, and now I can't remember any games. So. Wow! Still, I mean, this is this is fantastic. But I but I can't remember all the yeah the World Series from nineteen nineteen on. So. Okay, wait a minute. Who won this year? 
This year, uh, like you see, <laughs> uh, the Washington Nationals. Wow. Pete Houston. You're amazing. You're just amazing. I just, you know. It's Rain Man, ladies and gentlemen. Rain Man. <laughs> Everybody loves Rain Man. Okay. Anyway. Yes. Oh, my God. I read the real, you know, the real Rain Man knew every, he knew every zip code in America. Wow. Well, we'll test you on more stuff next time we talk to you. Have a happy Thanksgiving, Larry. You have a good bird, buddy. Bye. Five years and still talking. This is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Hey, everybody. Welcome back. It is Alex Bennett, and we are here uh, for for now. <laughs> you know, life's too short. Anyway, uh, talk about that later uh let me see here let me um go do the um uh where is it uh come on the skype there we go here comes the skype here comes the skype yeah i was listening to uh, damien i don't know why he's having trouble getting panels together why he feels he has to call people i don't understand why that problem with him exists but I don't know. Anyway, uh, I'm turning on the, uh, the what do you call it? The uh, Skype. <laughs> the what do you call it? The Skype. And uh, waiting for your calls. Oh, wait a minute. Let me turn that on back there. Where Where is that? There we go. It's, it's the on the air sign. It says we're on the air, uh, officially. And uh, now we'll just wait for people to call. Okay. Here comes Phil Meyer. Uh, okay, Phil. Uh, let me see here. We got to, uh, and he's already, uh, there we go. He's already got a spot from last week that didn't change because it didn't change. Hello, Phil. I, I, hey, how you doing? I reserved that spot. Yeah. 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 Uh, it's the center square. Oh, thank uh, you. Yeah. Oh, here comes Jeff Stein. Okay. So we uh, go here, and then we will put him up. I'm going to put him on top here. Well, hey, turn it off. Turn it off. Uh, we uh, go here, and then we will put him up. I'm going to put him on top here. Close your... Uh, turn it off. Turn it off. Uh, what do you call it? Uh, here, and then we will put him up. Just kill your browser. Kill the browser. Yeah, that's it, the browser. I was looking for the word. I couldn't remember. Kill the browser. <laughs> it's getting worse. <laughs> it's getting worse. I, I can't remember words either. Just kill the browser. Shut up. Can you? Well, shut up. <laughs> Are you okay now? That's his now? way of saying you're, quiet. You're, you're okay <laughs> now. You're okay now. Let me see here. Let me uh, put the... Uh, he, he, what? Yeah. We lost him. Yeah. Oh, boy. It's, it's, this is frustrating at best. Well, he may... You know, I don't know if he uses the Skype through the browser. If you turn the browser off, do you lose the Skype? Yeah, that would be true. Yeah, so he probably turned the browser off, and that was that. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know... Well, uh, you gonna talk about your uh, your uh, test? Yeah, I will. All right. I hope it was positive. No, nope. uh, I'll I'll wait till you know. No, I'll I'll, I'll wait till you're ready. Mm -hmm. I'm waiting for more people to call. You know, but yeah. this week uh, we're only doing two days this week. Yeah. Probably I should have done what Damien did. He's just taking the whole damn week off. You know. Yeah. Uh, uh Hey, here comes um, here comes Tony. Uh, let me see here, Tony. 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 Oh, I am disgusted. W what? What? Wait until I got to tell you. Turn your I'm browser so off, Tony. I'll tell you when you're ready. Dear, we're getting an echo from you. Oh, can you hear me better? No, no. There's some you got. I don't know. You've got something up. I don't know what. I, I think it's. I, I, I give up. You know. You want me to call back? No. No, just turn your browser off. Is your browser on? No. It is. Really? Uh, wait a minute. Uh, let me see here. I've got a. No. Damn it. I've got a. 
Turn the pot down, turn it back up, see if that's it. Let me see here. Jeff Stein. Here we go. Now, let me put Sibby Itty in there. Hold, hold on a second. First of all, let me put Jeff Stein in there. Okay. Jeff always gets it on the second um, thing. And uh, let me see here. We got to go to get Sibby on there. Um, let me see. What name are you using, Sibby? Oh, there, Sibby Sibs. Okay, there we go. There we are. All right. Yeah. Uh -huh. There we go. Uh, hi there, Sibby. How are you? I'm good. So, what did I miss? What was the discussion today? We, we, we you haven't missed anything yet. We just started. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> because yeah. Tuesdays I normally don't come in, but you know I'm off, so I thought you know I might as well join you guys. Oh yeah, you're at home. Yes, you're at home. Yeah. You're not at work. <laughs> Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, uh, question. Uh, since you interviewed Larry tonight uh, or for tonight, uh, did he mention uh, his his uh, uh, recording session that he's doing in San uh, Francisco? No, I no. guess he's making a, no, an album. No, I forgot. A comedy that. I, forgot album. I forgot to ask him about that. Yeah. Well, he's now advertising uh, that he's doing it on Facebook. So, uh, you know, the, the word is out there. Yeah. If you want to plug it, I think it's the 25th at the hearth which is on Gary Street. Uh, let me check and make sure. Mentioning it on this show isn't going to get him an audience. Well, uh, you have a lot of San Francisco listeners. No, I don't. You know, well, if you get get them 10, 10 or 15 more, that'd be nice. Yeah, you know? But I don't. Well, you got me. I got you. <laughs> lucky, well, lucky, lucky me. I got, yeah, I got yeah. you. Well, well yeah. Uh, I, hey, I could call Damien's show. I'd be just as happy. <laughs> yeah. It, 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 really? Because he's a nice guy. Yeah, I mean, but after you know. after the first of the year, you can only call him once a week. Oh, really? He's cutting down? Yeah, yeah. All right. And, well. I, and I may be too, for all I know. Yeah. yeah. Well, you know, uh, you should do what makes you happy. Well, what makes me happy, it's what I might have to do. So, you mm. know. All right. Let me see if I can find that... Uh, Thing. He's going to be in three places, but he's making a, a comedy album, uh, his first and only. Uh, let me see. Well, this is fascinating. All right. <laughs> well, somebody could talk while I'm looking. Oh, I, I do twice as much as huh? anybody else. Not on purpose, but it works that way. What What do you mean? <laughs> what, what, what? I, have to, I have to call twice to get it right. Oh, I see. Yeah, yeah. I don't know what your problem is. I don't know. Either. Do you use your browser to go on to the uh, on the Skype, or do you use the Skype app? I go right through Skype. Okay. Really? Yeah. So you so had, much for that. Yeah. So you had your you had your browser open. Obviously, that's yeah. where the sound was coming from. Yeah. So, uh, do, what do you use for your browser? I have an Apple. Air. Oh, oh, so you oh. use you probably use Safari. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you can usually turn off the sound on that particular tab, you know. But just uh, you know, kill that tab or whatever. Just make sure it's not on when you call. But you can always yeah. get it right the second time. So. Well. Okay. No harm, no foul. <laughs> you know. Well, okay. It's December 27th at the Hearth in San Francisco, <laughs> 28th at Sally Tomatoes in Rohnert like Park, see? and the 29th at the Setup Stand-Up Comedy in San Francisco. So uh, he's got a, a three days. I guess he's trying to record an album. Um, yeah. Okay. That means a lot to all the people in Omaha. Yes. Uh, uh, well, you, uh, you just spent a half hour talking to the guy. Yeah. At least, and, and, and apparently, and, for and apparently, he didn't care enough about it to mention it. Well, maybe he's too civil to, you know. Maybe you should have mentioned it. And, and I forgot. Out. You're the interviewer. I forgot about it. All right. I have well, other I'm reminding you. I have you. other things on my mind. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yes, uh, 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 Jeff. Jeff. How is your post-surgical result? Oh, yeah. I you have prostate problem. cancer. Oh, you do? Yeah. Did they oh, give you a Gleason score? Yep. What was it? A 20. 20? <laughs> no. I was going to say, that's kind of low. Did he ask for change? It's a 7. 
a seven. So yeah, but, four but, three or three four. Uh, well, it was. It, 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 uh, there were. Uh, let's see here. Uh, 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 I, I don't know. He took twelve cores, but there were only six mentioned. Mm-hmm. And of those, uh, four were three fours, and mm-hmm. two were four threes. Okay, wow. So one to the is that so common? It's just over the line. That's what I had. Uh, but my PSA went up really high for a little while, and it was a infection. But uh, you know, they got all concerned, and I said, I just rip it out, and I'm done with it. Yeah. Well. Anyway, uh, so um, I don't know that I would have ripped it out again. So the next step for me is uh, is radiation. So mm-hmm. yeah, all right. Uh, and I've been looking at all the radiation options, and the one that I'm going for probably will be the cyber knife because okay. it's it's only five treatments, oh. and that's it. And that's different than uh, the proton stuff. Yeah, proton is uh, is the same as the regular. <laughs> But it's very directed, oh, and oh, it's yeah. only five yeah. sessions. Did they tell you about having to put the balloon up your ass? Oh, shit. What else is new? Yeah. <laughs> I, I got one in my heart. They have to put a balloon up your ass for that. Is really? that how they put the stuff in? No. It's a matter of pushing your rectum in a certain way so that it's out of the way of the beam. Uh, I see. Oh, shit. That seems uncomfortable. Yeah. So, yeah, I, Go I, the other I, way. I don't want to balloon up my ass. I'm sorry. Yeah. And I don't and I don't want to and I don't want to go for like the the 5 or 6 weeks of 5 days a week for for oh, chemo. you know yeah. chemo not chemo for uh, Oh, it's, uh, it's radiation. Radiation. Yes. Uh but the the cyber knife uh is uh, just simply 5 sessions of about an hour each. Uh, and, uh, they uh, never offered me that so maybe I didn't qualify for it. Well, I mean it isn't a matter of qualifying or not qualifying for it. It's another form of radiation. And it has the least side effects and so on. So that's what I'm going to go for. My doctor, I said to him, is this going to kill me? And he said, no. He said, in fact, don't, don't even worry about it when you go to sleep. Oh, okay. You, you said, got it early enough. He said, uh, you know, this is, you know, uh, he said, uh, I'm, sure, he says, I'm sure it hasn't spread. He said, well, we'll look to see to make sure, but we're, we're sure it hasn't. I'm sure it hasn't yeah. spread. And he said, uh, uh, you know, the, the radiation will take care of the whole thing. Did he say why he couldn't feel the uh, the, the tumor? It's because there isn't one. Oh, it's just some cells. Yeah, yeah, oh. yeah. I obviously do not have a tumor in there. So well, that's good. Then, yeah. You know, uh, yeah. Whatever. You know, he as he put it to me, he said, "No, it's not going to kill you. It's just going to be mildly annoying." Oh, all right. You know, whatever that means. At least they had the technology to take care of you. I wonder if this was 30 years ago. They may not. 30 years ago, uh, uh, you know. It I might mean, have been a death l- sentence. Listen, if I do nothing about it, nothing, mm. something else might kill me first anyway. This is just making sure that because I have a slightly aggressive prostate uh-huh. cancer, because the seven is slightly aggressive, you know. Although on the one side, the three fours, as they say, uh, are what can we call it? Are not dangerous. They're almost like having a six, you know. They they they. And then the the four threes, the two four threes, are a little more uh, aggressive. Okay, and I, I and could a six. And could could become what? I, I when I had a biopsy done, it was a six. When they did the operation and removed the tumor, and then uh, did a biopsy on the tumor, mm-hmm. uh, it, it was a seven. It was a seven. Yeah. Wow. yeah. So either it started to you know uh, get more aggressive I, uh, between I, biopsy. I, and I hate to say this to you, but I think that you probably uh, shouldn't have had that thing yanked. Yeah. Uh, yeah, but you know, I just wasn't going to take any chances. Well, there are some people. I'm younger than you. Well, look, and, no, yeah. look. I mean, I could say that right now too. Just yank it, and then I don't have to worry about anything. You don't mm-hmm. want to go through it. You're, you're already almost eighty, and at your age, it's going to be extremely slow growing, even if it is a little more aggressive. 
Yeah. Well, you know, um, they're sending me to an oncologist, and we will go through the... Uh, he said he believes in the... Uh, uh, excuse me, I got two two uh, Kevins here, and I only want one Kevin. Hold on a second. Well, we do love you, Kevin. Uh, we'll make <laughs> one of you disappear. Okay. Uh, uh, but, you know... Um, uh, he, I said to him, is this going to kill me? He said, no way. He said, uh, you know, it, it's going to be mildly annoying to take care of it. He said, but once we do, he said, you're, he says, you'll probably live, uh, you'll pro it probably won't come back for another 10 years. Oh, that's yeah. good. He said, and when it does at that time, we'll give you the hormones, you know, if you're alive by then. Um, but uh, they're going to give me the hormones anyway, he said, because before doing the uh, radiation, they find that doing the hormones for a couple of weeks uh, kind of makes the hormone, the, the radiation work better. And the hormones really? will give me hot flashes. And I'll probably. Right, then maybe you'll want to be a woman. And I'll probably start crying uncontrollably, uncontrollably here on the air. <laughs> but when I go, th if I, if I. When I go through the radiation therapy, I think I'm going to take a couple of weeks off here because it, yeah. it, it spread out. I, mean, I, think, out. I think it's spread out over two weeks. And it isn't, it, it, you're just fatigued. That's really the yeah. worst part of it. And, uh, uh, you know, I mean, I mean, I'm not afraid of dying. I just don't want to have to go through this shit, you know? Uh, yeah. You know. There's uh, better things to do. Yeah, and then sure. then I got uh, 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 not this week, uh, not next week, but the mm -hmm. week afterwards. I'll be off on Tuesday and Wednesday of that week because we have the tri <coughs> the trial. Uh, really? Oh. Yeah. So they set a date. What do you mean? It's been set for a long time. Oh, uh, I thought they kept postponing. They postponed, and then this was the reset date, and. Oh. Uh, we just went and met with the lawyer yesterday, and we gave him everything, and you know, and we talked to him, and he then gave us, you know, started uh, uh, testing us and doing things like that, so that when we get on the stand, we'll be consistent. And uh, it's, uh, you know, uh, th that I have to look forward to. That 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 maybe I'm looking more not forward to than the radiation therapy. Did they uh, make an offer to settle yet, or do you think they will? No, no, no. I mean, we've got, it's basically it's the landlords who don't want to settle. Okay. Really? Yeah, yeah. The landlords are famous for not settling, and if they lose, going to arbitration, which is then another two years and another fifty thousand dollars. You know. Uh, and I mean, yesterday I, I, I said to my lawyer, I said, you know, I, what bothers me about all of this is that all we ever did that was wrong is we were looking for an apartment, you know, we didn't do anything else wrong. We simply trusted that the real estate person was not lying to us. We, uh, uh, you know, we, um. Uh, Assume that the guy who was renting to us really had the right to rent this apartment. And none of that was true. And so we got pulled into this whole thing just simply as innocent bystanders. Standards. Standards. Yeah, bystanders. And um, I, I said it has resulted in years of spending a lot of money, uh, years of spending... Wait, 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 what, what happened there? What oh. happened? Wait a minute, something wrong. Uh, anyway, uh, it, 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 you know, years of of uh, of, of um, paying out a lot of money to lawyers, years of uh, feeling impermanence, years of just grief over this whole thing. And I said, you know, in the beginning, all we wanted to do was to stay in this apartment. I said. But if anybody asked me now, you're in it for the money, I'd go, I definitely am. <laughs> Good. <laughs> I, I said, because I, at this point, I feel I need some compensation for the grief that we've been put through for not having done anything wrong. Yep. You know? And even they would have to admit, we didn't do anything wrong. You know? But yet, we're, we'll, we'll be made, they'll try to make us look like bad guys in court. 
you know, in which case I may lose my temper. No, you screw you. And say, I don't give a fuck if I lose this case, you know. You know, how dare you even question my integrity, you know. Well, just remember, if you lose, are you responsible for the other guy's attorney's fees? And if you are, don't lose your temper. No, because I did, we didn't sue him. Well, we countersued him to defend ourselves, but we, yeah. did, we're not, we didn't sue him. Um, oh, no, we're, we, want, uh, we want our attorney's fees. That we want, you know, now, yeah. you know, as soon as possible. But the thing is, yeah, look what's going to happen. I'm sure what's going to happen is the landlord is going to lose his part of the suit. The guy who rented us the place is going to lose his part of the suit with us, okay? Then the landlord, who's going to have to pay him off so he can pay us off, is going to go into arbitration. And that's another two years of just jerking off some more. Yeah. You know, I mean, I'm sick of this. I'm just sick of it. Somewhere, I would like some lawyer, some judge to say, no, 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 none of that shit, you know. I mean, and then, it, you know, when it goes to arbitration, it goes to five judges instead of one. Really? Yeah. So this judge could find everything that he wants to find against the landlords and blah, 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 blah. And the landlords are going, okay, well, we're going to arbitration, you know, because they got deep pockets. Well, uh, well, I guess your lease is not uh, is not valid. So if there was, uh, you know, I don't know if you had an arbitration clause in that. Well, the lease, but the if lease, the lease is not valid, it lease, doesn't matter. The lease was valid uh, if if in fact he had the right to give a lease, but he didn't, so it wasn't valid. Right. You know, uh, uh, the, what it is is that what we signed was a lease. What he wasn't able to give us was a lease. You know, so he gave us a lease and we signed it. And um, uh, the, the woman who's probably going to testify on the landlord's behalf is going to be the realtor. And she signed it as the witness mm. and as the guarantor <laughs> of, the, of, the, of the thing. Ah. So, well, she has insurance too. Uh, errors and omissions. So uh, what maybe... Do mean, what do you mean she has insurance? Uh, a realtor has insurance uh, uh, called errors and omissions insurance. And uh, when someone is wronged and sh and she puts her name on that lease, she may be culpable. Uh, uh, your your attorney didn't mention that? No, no, we didn't get that far. You know, oh. uh, we didn't get that far. Okay, because uh, you might want to. No, you know, no, no, maybe she'll no, sue no. Her. Yeah, sure. We want to. We want to spend another fifty thousand dollars on a lawyer. Well, she has insurance. No, but she, yes, yeah, so she has, I, how do you know she has fucking insurance? All realtors have errors realtors, and omissions Not insurance. necessarily, not necessarily. She is, I don't think, a full-time employee of Halstead Realty, okay? Yeah. She's like a free agent. Yeah. So maybe but, she doesn't have it. You don't know, Phil. Yeah. But I'm sure, but my, my uh, uh, you know, we said to the lawyer, we said we would love to be able to, like, you get her license yanked, and he said, "Yeah, well, go out and spend another fifty thousand dollars on lawyers <laughs> to do that." Uh, you know, uh, how how much justice can you afford? Yeah, how much? Well, you know, here's here's the part of it all, is that, you know, it, it, for us to collect even the lawyers' fees, we can't have this landlord go to arbitration. I mean, once he loses an arbitration, he's going to lose a lot, mm -hmm. you know, because he will have taken this further than he should have, you know. But, I mean, I just, I just consider the whole thing a nuisance. And, and the big mistake that, uh, that uh, this guy who rented to us made is by trying to sue us or p involve us in the, in the situation because we went to a lawyer. We didn't know we had any rights. We were already looking for another apartment. We yeah. figured we didn't have any rights. So finally we went to this one lawyer and the lawyer said, oh, this is illusory tenancy. You got a case. Uh, Tony's basement is available. He moved upstairs. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, you know, an illusory tenancy is, uh, you know, I mean, it's a triple damages. 
you know, so yeah. we'll, we'll see what happens. Yeah. Hey, uh, did you watch that Sasha Baron Cohen video I sent you? Yes, I did. Yeah. It was that was I thought it was very interesting his his uh, take on Facebook and Twitter. Yeah, uh, I, I you, didn't you wanna... I didn't watch the whole thing. I had too many oh. other things on my mind. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I get he was uh, given an award at the ADL, which is the uh, Anti Defamation League. Defamation League, mm-hmm. and uh, he he gave an interesting uh, acceptance speech, uh, which kind of uh, dealt with the way. Uh, the media, the social media, is is dealing with lies and uh, and allowing them to perpetrate, uh, and you know, saying that he doesn't believe that it's a First Amendment right for them to advertise things that aren't vetted and don't know that they're that they're right. Uh, you know, I guess uh, other other news outlets vet uh, their no, stuff. No, here, 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 here's what's here's what's happening, and it, it you know, I mean. For whatever you want to say, I mean, he's not telling us anything we don't already know. The problem is that news has become a money-making operation. It's a profit center for the networks, okay? And that being said, uh, they're doing everything they can to make a profit. And if they're going to gin up stories, they're going to gin up stories, you know? And it 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 doesn't uh, it it's if you're expecting it to be the highfalutin news operations that we once had. You're crazy. I mean, even the New York Times, who I consider respectable, and you don't, but I do, uh, is less respectable today because they're fighting for their life to survive. You know? And they can't do that by not presenting something to the public that is going to be of interest to them. So that's the problem. You know? Well, yeah, what he was also uh, alluding to is that there are certain giants in the social media, Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, and Google, Mm -hmm. and that uh, they are just raking in the cash rather than uh, uh, vetting uh, advertisers as well as stories, uh, and he feels that they should put personnel there to, uh, you know, to vet this stuff that is... Yeah, but that's uh, not their job. Yeah, yeah, well, yeah, because that's what they're with, saying. To, but, to begin uh, with, you're, you're trying to align them with being a news organization, and they're not. And, you know, uh, uh, they take advertising, they take advertising. Listen, you know, radio stations used to be very careful about what kind of advertising they took. Well, I, all I know is that a few years ago, I turned on a, a, a station here in New York, and they were running ads for men's clubs, you know, strip clubs. So, you know, I mean, it's gotten to the point where people will take advertising from anybody as long as they've got the money to pay for the advertising. Yes, Tim. But what was he really, you know, I understand what he's trying to say, Sasha Barakon, at least the way Phil's explaining it. But on the same token, it's like you said, Alex, and even Phil, in today's day and age with digital media, Facebook, people, you can go on your page right now, Phil, and just put a whole tirade up of like, make it look like it was an actual piece of article you wrote. And they can't really vet that. I mean, this is a guy who basically was basically his whole show premise is making up false little clips. I mean, he's yeah. living in a bubble. He thinks they're going to be able to take every little piece yeah, of information okay for him to and be put it under a microscope. It's okay for him well, to be false, but not for the not for. Facebook. Well, he he says it's under the it's roots of comedy. Uh, yeah, uh, uh, he was actually being himself in this. Uh, I understand that but he's actually he's trying to think he's smarter than what he is and he you cannot control facebook phil you can go on right now now and I can let me ask you this sorry and you can sway people uh how come i see all these people that wind up in facebook jail for posts that they that they do they're they're I mean, they're in I jail for 30 days if you put up profanity you can get you can get taken down so they do have things that they have ramifications for no these these are uh right-leaning uh, people that are posting all sorts of, you know, pro Trump crap and pro this and pro that and uh, conspiracy theories, but they usually it's the right wing. Uh, look well, at I Alex don't know Jones. The right wing or the left wing. I'm not going to Ale- it. Alex Jones, who is a uh, entertainer yeah. and a conspiracy theorist, uh, uh, puts they up information one. and he's he's off of Facebook. He's off of okay, YouTube. But let me ask you this question, Phil. You don't think he has sicko fans that are posting for him? Probably, but it, it, the whole so thing then, is... There's always he, a way around the system. Yeah, but uh, he's um, his posts 
are are not available on YouTube. Yeah, his posts, but then he has his people that do it for him. Well, but it doesn't matter. His posts are Yes, not it for does. Because his message is still getting out Sib- there. Sibby seems to agree. Or, or yeah, I think, Phil is right. I think Phil is right. Tony, Phil is right about this. You don't think he, oh, Alex Jones has people out there spreading his word? Even if he's not doing it in he his might, name? He, he might have it, but the, the credibility, you know, coming from his own mouth or from his own piece is different from someone posing for him. So that's well, all. Well, I, I, I also, I also saying, think... If they're posing for him, it still helps. Uh, let me also say about a guy like Alex Jones. I mean, I think I was the first one to defend his right to be on YouTube and to be on Facebook and to be on all these social media platforms, even though everything he says is a fucking outright lie. Yeah. Because as long as you're going to open yourself and say this is an electronic Hyde Park where anybody can get up on a speaker's box and say anything he wants to say, you don't then make an exception of Alex Jones. No. You know? So, you, so you, is my you. argument correct that they are able to vet, but they choose to selectively vet? Uh, if I were running Facebook, I would not mm-hmm. have taken Alex Jones off. I would have hated every minute that Alex Jones was using my uh, platform for what he was doing because it was lying and it was horrible and it was anti-Semitic and it was racist and it was everything else. But I feel that if I say all comers, come on, post stuff on Facebook, then I've got to say everybody post post on Facebook even if I disagree with you and even, even if I know you're lying. And that's where they did not educate the public by saying not everything you're going to see on Facebook is true. Check the facts, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, that's be- true. I mean, well, I be- don't know. It's a sticky situation. Because I'm agreeing with you, Alex. I don't think it's, you know, they want to send. That's the censorship. That's the thing. If maybe if we were paying for it, they'd be able to do a little more. I don't know. How do you regulate it? That's what they're afraid I, of. I don't think they're responsible for censoring. I, I, but I also feel that they, they really, you know, uh, when it comes to things of morality, they do censor, and I find that objectionable as well. I think if somebody wants to sh- put somebody, show somebody show his wife blowing him on Facebook, he has the right to do it. Yeah, I mean, yeah, watch at your own risk. I agree yeah. with you. I, I, yeah. I think when you start censoring things, you're going down a bad F, yeah. So much. now you're making what you're doing is you're making judgmental choices as to who has access to your platform and who doesn't. And that is wrong if you're acting like in the beginning you wanted all comers. You wanted everybody who wanted to use it. True. You know? You know what he could be judgmental, Alex, on? Let's say if you were running Facebook, you owned a part of it. And I said, oh, Alex, these people want to sell ads on your page. Then you could tell me, Tony, I don't want to take that ad. I don't, I don't want to take that money. You don't have to let people know it. You can turn it down. That's a different story. Uh-huh. Like say if we didn't want to run. Yeah, say he, he, doesn't, he doesn't, to ha- he doesn't have page. to take any ad that comes along. Uh, I, uh, I used to have a policy with my programs that mm. uh, uh, I would never – say who could not advertise on my show uh and and the reason for that being that i felt that i i didn't um uh, well, well, how did i exactly come about that i mm-hmm. that that i have opinions but that doesn't mean that i'm going to censor who advertises as long as their advertising is truthful in other words it it isn't offering a product that doesn't do what it says Okay, okay. Uh, that's you know that's a no no. If you've got a product that's that or it's harmful to people, then I don't want to take that advertising. But as an example, uh, the uh, Republican Party decided at one point that it would be a good idea to buy time on my show during an election because I had all these liberals whose minds they might change, mm-hmm. and I didn't yeah. say I don't want that advertising on my show. I just said, I don't want to do a live read for them. I don't want to personally endorse it. But they have the right to advertise on my show. And I think gold. Gold? Well, no. You didn't like the gold, I, I didn't like gold, and I'll tell you why. Because I felt that it was lying to the audience. It was bilking the audience financially. And that I just did not want... Uh, 
gold on my show. I they I told them they could advertise on my show. I didn't stop them from. Oh, you wouldn't do a live. I read wouldn't then. do a live read for them, okay. a- and they wanted a live read out of me, and I wasn't going to do it because I said I I just don't believe in gold the way you're selling it or the way you're couching it. You know, mm-hmm. if if you want me to go on the air and say. Uh, Hey, buy gold. You'll be pouring money down the drain. Then I'll do it. You know, but but uh, I don't think you want me to do that. And I kind of see what you're saying now. So say if somebody listens to your show, golf. But say I listen to it. Oh, Alex says gold is really good. He said it. Well, if and I put a a lot of my dollars into it, I lose all that money. Well, you might feel bad saying, "Hey, you know what? You said it was good." In the days in San people can be misjudged. In in the days in San Francisco, when I used to do a lot of live reads which my live reads were very valuable there were at least two an hour and i used to make fifty dollars a read so count that up i made four hundred dollars a day just doing live commercials okay and i said that there are two things number one i i will i i want to see if it's if it's a product i want to see the product don't have to give me a free one i just want to see the product i want to be able to use it and make sure it does what they say it does, okay? Um, and the product can't hurt anybody. And when it came to gold, I felt that hurt people. You know, it was making them spend their money uh, on a wrong premise, and they could lose their money, lose their shirts on it, and I wasn't about ready to be part of that. Tom Hartman was. Oh, yeah, remember that? I used to listen, when you said that, I used to listen to his show sometimes. He ran that like crazy. Yeah, yeah, he used to have oh, it. Shit. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, um, but I, when I was doing all those live spots in San Francisco, I had rules, you know, and that I would not do it. Uh, you know, you, if they wanted to run a commercial on my show, that's not my business. That's the station's business. If they want me to do a live ad. There was another reason why. There was a more selfish reason. When I would do live reads, I would really sell product. I sold more Vermont teddy bears on oh, my <laughs> show than anybody in this country, including <laughs> Howard Stern. He was number two. I was number one just in my one market of selling Vermont teddy bears. I got a box of those son of a bitch because of you. you. <laughs> oh, oh, really? <laughs> I, I got one too. <laughs> Thank you very much, you see. And, and you, I got one too, like way back. Yeah. I would say... And, and more, more than 10 years ago, I, uh, <laughs> the, I had I have a whole giant box of them because they would keep sending me Vermont teddy bears. There, there they are. There I'm proud is. to say I proof. never bought one. Yeah, although I used to get my bought. kids Stife steady teddy bears. Yeah. Stife is this German company, I think it was the original teddy bear yeah. company that. Uh, well, well the Vermont teddy, teddy bear company was run by a guy who was a really he's a sweet man, just an absolute like Willy Wonka. You know, that, that, that way. Yeah. And, that and I love the guy. I really love the guy. And they sold the company. But uh, uh, it, uh, And if you go up to Burlington, where my friends, where I visit my friends, we drive right by the uh, Vermont Teddy oh, Bear Vermont. Factory. Yeah. 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 But anyway. Um, they I were sh- good. But I sold those. Ver- yeah, they were terrific. I sold those Vermont good Teddy fun. Bears like crazy. Like crazy. And my feeling was, hey, if I run an ad for somebody just because I want to make some money off of running a live read and their product sucks and somebody gets one and it's terrible, then that's going to affect my reputation doing live pitches. In other words, I want people to know that, hey, you bought the Vermont teddy bear, you liked them, right, Kevin? Yep. So if yep, I'm, my, my wife has a whole box of them. So if I'm <laughs> telling you now, I can't remember some of the other advertisers I had to go buy another product. You believe me the uh, next you, time. You had a flower, uh, b- b- not flowers. Alzuki, uh, it was... Pro, um, pro flowers. No, yeah. no, no, this no. was uh, local flower. Pro f- Started with a B. Oh, oh yeah, uh, 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 oh, yeah. Italian name. Yeah, yeah, I know who you're talking about. I'll, I'll, oh. And Dalduki or uh, something like that? Yeah. The Luca? Uh, no, no, it started with a B. And they were a very good, a good flower company. But when I, very, got, when I got to Sirius... Yeah. They said, would you do uh, pro flowers? Because all over the country, guys were doing live pro flower ads. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So I said, okay. And they said, they want to send you some. And I said, oh, okay, fine. And they sent me some. And I took them home. And within a day, they were dead. Yeah. Oh. 
And, and I said that. to the people at, at Sirius, I said, uh-uh, I ain't going to do a live read for them. And they said, why? I said, because their flowers die. They die really fast. Yeah, they come in a box and they're 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 laying there half dead already. Yeah, yeah. They're packed in their I, own. I ordered coffin. them once and I didn't like them. They're packed in their own coffin. <laughs> yeah, yeah <they're, laughs> that's right. <laughs> uh, and uh, I I just wouldn't uh, I wouldn't do it. I just didn't uh, I didn't uh, you know I had to be careful about who I would do ads for. And it's serious. They got really mad at me because I wouldn't do pro flowers. But I said I can't do it. I said, they, they, they suck. I brought them home to my wife and said, look, dear, what I got you. I got you pro flowers. And she, the next day, they're dead, and I'm in this shit house. You know? <laughs> I said, I don't want that to happen to anybody else. Not on my watch. Podesta Balducci. But no, no, Podesta Balducci was a, was a very famous one. But this oh, was a, okay. Then it was, was it was a guy. Yeah, it was a guy. It was a bee. Right. No, I'm trying to remember his name now. God damn it! I, I wish <laughs> Bubbles were here right now. Yeah. Uh, he'd remember. Uh, it was um, oh butter, huh? Butter. Yes, yeah, uh, butter flowers. No, uh, the uh, uh, it was. Um, Oh, I know his name. Jeez almighty. It'll, it'll, I'll be lying down tonight and all of a sudden. <laughs> I'm sorry. It I will come to me. myself now. Hey, he did that a couple I, of I, I don't know if he's still in business. Well, let's find out. San Francisco go. Flowers. Gotta love the internet. Francisco oh, Flowers. I, love this. I can't live without it. San Francisco <laughs> Flowers. Let's see here. Same day floral delivery. Nah, 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 nah. Uh, flower mark, plant, farm girl. Uh, Ten best flower deliveries in San Francisco. Let me see here. Was that was that the live one hundred five days? Y yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, it yeah. might have been. Yeah, yeah. Um, hmm. Well, come on. This isn't. Uh, there we uh, go. Oh, let's see. Uh, blue man. Yachi. Uh, no, no. Huh. Yeah, you know, I'm trying to remember what it was, but yeah, we'll spend the whole rest of the show trying to remember the name of the. Uh... Yeah, so you know, here I wanted to talk about you know the internet and uh, and uh, the First Amendment and all of these things, and uh, we're looking for a flower shop that doesn't exist anymore. <laughs> Let's see here. It's, uh, nine most beautiful flower shops in San Francisco. Uh, let me see here. Uh... Flowers of the Valley. Yeah, it like, started with a B. It was the guy's name. Yeah, I know. It, it, it was the guy's name. And his, oh, God. Oh, uh, let's see here. <laughs> <laughs> just, I'm, I'm on it, too. We're going to spend the rest of the show trying to come up with this name. Will you come up with it before I die of prostate cancer? <laughs> okay. Hmm. Yeah. So, anyway. Um Brought to you by yeah. If you had a seven, Phil, you should. Have, you should, They probably could have given you radiation. Uh, they offered. I would have done it. They told me it was fifty or fifty-five sessions. It's no. It's uh, more like forty. Well, that was enough. Yeah. Uh, no, I just wanted you know. And and with the and with the uh, with the. Uh, uh, the cyber knife, which most hospitals have a either the cyber knife or a version of that, because cyber knife mm -hmm. is a brand name, okay? Yeah. Um, but they become so ins done so much advertising that hospitals like to say we have the cyber knife, you know. But I think, like for instance, uh, uh, where he wants to send me at uh, 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 Mount Sinai. They have some form of it. It's called status something or another. It's a, there's a non-brand name for it. A, a big part of my decision yeah. was because I uh, my prostate was so enlarged, it was like 130 milligrams. I, I forget what the uh, thing was. A normal one is 30. Uh, and, and at 130, uh, I was carrying around a watermelon, not a prostate. And uh, I was getting up 10 times a night to pee. I just said, you know, I'll kill two birds with one stone. Get the fucker out of there. Get rid of the cancer. That wasn't and get a rid stone, of the Phil. That was a boulder. <laughs> yeah, really? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, 
Um, uh, no, but I mean, uh, you know, because I mean, I have seven, and that's considered intermediate, you know. Yeah. Gleason's At the moment. Story. Yeah, two of them were the high kind of Gleasons. The other one was the low kind of sevens, which is closer to a six. So my doctor, I said, what would you do? What would you have me do? And he said, I'd have you do the radiation. He said, you know, he said, and there are many ways of doing it. And then he mentioned the cyber knife thing. And he said, most people would like to do that instead of going for the, all those, you know, you know, five weeks, Sessions. six weeks of five days a week going for like a week, five days and it's over. You know, it's done. Well, uh, pe people have told me that the radiation, maybe not the cyber knife, because I don't know anything about that, but the radiation, there's other side effects because it damages well, other that's tissues. that's why the cyber knife is so much better. Yeah. It doesn't, and, it doesn't, um, it goes directly to the prostate. It doesn't affect the bowels. It doesn't affect the bladder. It doesn't affect any of that. Yeah. Well, they didn't offer of me that. Uh, I didn't yeah. even know it existed, and I never heard of it until, yeah, well, I, listen, I've heard oh, of it, but oh, I didn't oh, equate oh, it. Over at Kaiser, they don't know any of those things exist, so. Well, I they, they don't true? use a cyber knife. They use, they use a rusty <laughs> machete. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> what? You want to laugh, Alex? Can I tell you something? I, you know, I, I was going to tell you why I was mad today, the other, yesterday. I went to my mom's doctor with her, right? Mm -hmm. So the, the doctor is the room and says, Anthony says, if you want to have your mom, he gave me an ear doctor just to have her ears cleaned, right? So, okay, no problem. He's right in the area, Middle Village. Okay. So my brother says, make the appointment and I'll take you. So I says, all right. So I call them up and the guy says, oh, we don't take Medicaid. I mean, Medicare. How can you not take Medicare? Well, doctors don't have to take Medicare. It, there's but another one that does down the street from you. To take Medicare. Hey, Tony, there's one down the street from you, but he uses a fire hose to clean out the... Oh, uh, but I'm being honest, though. Isn't that a joke? She puts into it a whole life, and then they don't even take it. What kind of doctor? I mean, I've what kind of, what, 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 wait a minute. It. What kind of doctor was he? Uh, an ear doctor. I have his name. Ear I'm doctor. not going to say. Okay. You know, she just has to get it clean. I mean, if he were something that dealt with old people, you can bet your life he would take Medicare. You know, like I but go, I, mean, I go to... I've, ne I've like never been to a urologist in my life that doesn't take Medicare. Because if he doesn't, he's out of business. That's the good thing about Kaiser is that, you know, they, they once you're in their system, they take you for everything. Yeah. yeah but you want to laugh or listen to this? Then my brother goes, we all go to the same doctor, Ruben, Stephen Ruben, right? So my brother, and this is no joke, he, he wanted him to get his ears cleaned because we all went for a test, mine are fine. So they wouldn't even take Cigna, the same guy, because I was going to make the appointment the same day. Come on, these guys turn down insurances, Phil. This, they, it, one of these fucking suits in the White well, House make it mandatory I'll, that if you have insurance, okay. they have to I'm take gonna tell you the it. Tony, pay cash and get I'm reimbursed. A, I'm going to tell you the reason why they turn down insurance, okay? Why? Because if they are in network with an insurance company, they have to charge what that insurance company says they have to charge for a particular thing, okay? It's like my dental thing. Uh, okay. I, I only paid one hundred seventy-five dollars, one hundred fifty-seven dollars the other day to have my tooth filled. Now, normally that would be four hundred, but my do dentist is in network, and so she has to charge what the network, what the the, the uh, insurance says she can charge. Okay, so that's why a lot of them don't take. They don't take any. They just say, write me a check. You know, go That's get what the, I said. If I would and go money, and, and go is. and go get the money from your insurance company. I mean, you're insured, right? Your mother's Ooh. insured, right? Oh yeah. And you could go to this doctor. That's and, what I said. My mother's you, making and then, much and then you could pay him out of pocket, and then yeah. you could go to your insurance company and say, "How much am I going to get back from you? Send me some money back." That's what I was thinking it's, of doing. I was going to flip it over. It, but I because I. You know, but, I figured we'll try to find somebody in in, in that tape. But you're not going. But now we have to go maybe to Brooklyn. You're not going to get a lot of money. That's the question. Yeah. yeah. So I mean, all right. So I'll have, I'll have to flip it out. Big deal. Yeah. But my mother's like, why can't we go right here? Nancy goes to him because this clown I said is not taking it, and she doesn't hear that good really. So I have to walk over to her. But I wanted to go to him, but we can't now. unless I said, "My, we'll go. We'll just have to pay cash." Because you know, he's always going to take the green. If you go to Brooklyn, they got the best pizza in Brooklyn. <laughs> yeah. Phil, that, come that's on, where the best pizza is. This is why we should have single payers. So, Everybody Phil, do you think my that. prostate's going to kill me? 
What? What's gonna kill you, you think? Was it bloomers? Uh, huh? Bloomers? What 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 what? No, you said uh, what you say about the I, I, I said, do you think it's gonna kill me? No, it wasn't bloomers. No. Nah. You're, you're, you're gonna get some. Oh. It was an Italian name. You won't even see it uh, coming. Al Duki. Like I said, I get hit by Al a truck. Duki. <laughs> Wait a minute. Uh, uh, oh God, you're, you're close. Yeah. You're close. Balducci? Balducci's? Maybe? Like that. I was there? Maybe it was Balducci's. Yeah. What's that no, mean? Balducci's was, is, is a... Uh, is Restaurant? A, it, no, it's a, a, a food store here in New York. Uh, Bella Fiora. No. No. Uh, hey, we go to Valentino's over here by us for fruit and vegetables. He's old. Yeah. It's hard to park. I mean, I, I used to yeah, know the guy. Keep gu- talking. I'll just keep I, looking. I, was, I, used to, I used to know the guy, you know? Um... Uh, uh, he would always send me flowers. Yeah. Yeah. I think he might have uh, advertised even a camel. I might even recognize it when I see it. Yeah. Give him a bag of money, like Phil said. Here's, the, here's your money. Take it. Here's a bag of money. Yeah. Yeah. Eat it. Take it. <laughs> Just throw it at him. <laughs> Tony. All right. I well, you, turn Phil didn't answer no. my question. You think this is, the prostate thing's going to kill me? No. no. Frank Giappiani. Yeah. What? No. Wait, wait, what'd you say? Frank Frank Piani? No. No. Frank no. 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 Yes, uh, yes, yes, Jeff. Jeff. Yes, Jeff. I have a recommendation for Tony. Yeah. His problem with his mother. Go to that doctor and say, mm-hmm. if it was your mother, what would you? Yeah, I should do that. I send woman. it to an in-network guy. Right? Oh, give her a <laughs> little. Jewish doctor. You son of a bitch. Doctor, You're gonna make it go to Brooklyn. I don't know if it, what, I don't know if that would be the wise thing to do. Though. I'll throw a comic book at him. Here, take this. <laughs> <laughs> Bang it over his head. Yeah, take it, take it. Now, I got four more. Now, Banducci oh. was the guy that owned Enrico's. Uh, Banducci. So it wasn't Banducci. No, no. Uh, Natalini. No. Uh, if, if if we stop trying to think of it, it may waft <laughs> over me. That'll just go away. <laughs> By the way, folks, in case you just joined us, this is our newest format on this program. Floraria. Trying to figure out who the florist was in San Francisco that I used to do ads for. Um, What's this? Hmm? And I used to know his full plow. name, nope. too, because, you know. Yeah. Huh. I, 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 you know. Apparently, I mean, I went flowers, San Francisco, and nothing Came up. Nothing. I, I'm sure he's out of business or dead. Yeah, or probably. And I don't know if he's dead. Uh, same day delivery. Uh, flowers and Sam. Uh, Elizabeth Flowers, Farm Girl, Wreath, uh, Urban Flowers, San Francisco Flower Delivery. Yeah, who knows? I give up. Yeah, you're doing the same thing I am. Now. Yeah, yeah. Flowers by Richard. Alex Bennett. What? Flowers Live 105, and it didn't come up with anything. It, it really didn't come up with anything. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Kathleen just, oh, she just said, you guys are funny. <laughs> well, Kathleen, you're no fucking goddamn good because you could come up with the name of that flower shop, the guy. Well, not just. But it's just not. You're Bel-Nacia. somewhat. Well, ball. Oh God! I'm going for every Italian name I can see. Well, this is certain, this format sucks. Yeah, let's <laughs> change it. Jeez, Almighty! Hmm. Hmm. So today, uh, Trump pardoned the turkey. This is a yearly ritual that I'm he getting pardoned a little the turkey. Yeah, he did. Yeah. yeah. How can he do that? Doesn't he, was, he know he that there was the, a cabinet member that didn't want the turkey pardoned? And, uh, what, you know, because the guy said he's a gobbler and you can't pardon a gobbler. He was down in Florida and said bullshit, too. Yeah. He cursed? Uh, let's see here. You guys are funny. <laughs> he looks kind of old. Said, old too. I'm looking at a picture. He Kathleen, looks Kathleen, who isn't here right now, but is one of the funniest people I know, says, you all and your flowers... It was called Flowerinis. No, it wasn't. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> no. I saw that one. I already said that. Uh, flowerinis. 
Oh, boy. Um, God, he, he, we always use this full name, too. Hugasian. That's it. Uh, uh, not a B. Hugasian, that's it. Uh, not Hugesian. a B. Anything. No, that's Hugesian. Hugesian. That is from John, uh, John Crosby. Yeah, John Crosby. How? Uh, yeah. Oh, geez, and I knew a John Crosby yeah. down Burlingame. He runs a, a funeral parlor. Uh, and it was this, Harold. Uh, it was Harold Hugasian. Yeah, and this Colossus guy uh, uh, also wrote Hugasian. Now, now the question is: the question that's is, it. Does, does he Harold Hugasian? Harold. Is that it? Yeah. 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 Hugasian. Um, uh, let's see here. Let's see here. Hugasian. Uh, San Francisco Obituary. Flores. Flower delivery by Hugasian Flowers. There you go. In fact, folks, had it if, there. if you don't believe me, I believe I have it here for you. There we... Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Hold on a second. Where do I go here? Screen. Screen. Oh, well, let me just, uh, hey, let me just do this. It's still in business? Look at that. Hugasian Flowers. Uh, I'll see it in 30 seconds. Yeah. Uh, they're... Uh, it doesn't have an address here, but, you know. Oh, yeah. It says about us. Let's see. What does it say about us? About the company. Serves the Bay Area. It doesn't say anything about Harold Hugasian yet, though, here. But... Um, uh, just put in uh, Hugasian's obituary. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, this is... Uh, that, that's Hugasian flowers right there, folks. 615 7th Street. Huh? So it was that it's six fifteen seventh street. Right. So it was down by the mart. Boy, the, uh, the flower. Leave, mart. leave it to my old audience to be able to figure that one out, huh? Huh? Yeah. Huh? Huh? Uh, I don't know where I came up with the B. Balduki. Oh, well, I was probably thinking Podesta Balduki. Yeah, well, yeah, Balduki. If I had just somehow somebody had said, "Oh, he was Armenian," I would have gone, "Oh yeah, Hugasian." Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but uh, yeah. yeah. Okay, so you used to read live spots for him. Okay, well, now we can go back to my prostate cancer. Okay. <laughs> um, so anyway, um, but uh, thank you very much, Kathleen, for being funny tonight. I know it's hard because of what you're going through at the present time, but if you know, it's okay. So yeah. anyway, Hugasian flowers. Ah. Oh, God. Yeah. Uh, let me see here. Is there anything else that I uh, want to talk about? Oh, so anyway, so the pardoning of the turkey. Always, every year it bothers me. I don't know why. It just seems like such a stupid thing to do. Right, Sibby? I mean... Yes, I think it is. You know, I mean, where you come from, you didn't pardon a turkey. You ate the fucking thing. <laughs> No cows. No, no cows. I, I, I mean, only the Hindus don't eat cows because it's there's a reason behind it because you know Hindus have Global more than ten thousand gods. You know the thing is they believe you know when you when you are a poor man and if you have a cow, you know you can make you know you can get this milk and you sell and you you make money and you can feed your family. You know if you just had a yeah. cow. You could actually raise a family out of, you know, the manure you can sell, the milk, the cheese, everything. So that's why it's um, it considered to be like a provider. So they don't yeah. want to eat the provider. That's the logic. In, in other it's words, because they do supply other stuff. And so they, yes. the other stuff yes. that you subsist on. Yes. Because okay. if you have a cow, your your family won't go hungry because it's always, you know, it's gonna, always going to provide you something. Yeah. Oh, this is okay. a stretch. But you know, the Chinese just bought uh, for six hundred million dollars the largest milk producers in uh, in Australia, and so they kind of cornered the uh, the uh, the milk market uh, and all of the brands uh, that they sell in Australia, and uh, you know, and, and this is you know just one more step of taking over uh, you know businesses and spreading their uh, global. Aspirations. Yep, you know. yep. They've been doing. Uh, they've been doing the whole expansion thing for a long time. Mm -hmm. People don't talk about it, but they have pretty much, you know, captured a whole bunch of African countries. 
they have you know supplied cheap uh, Chinese goods to them and loaned up you know a yeah. lot of jobs like for the locals. The yeah, a lot of jobs for the locals. So they just come up and set up the shop. But the problem is all the upper management, the middle management is all Chinese. It's only the lower level employees, they hire the locals. And the locals are never promoted. So there was a big um, hoo-ha about it, you know, a couple of, I think it's Zimbabwe, if I'm not mistaken, or probably Nigeria. They yeah. were complaining about it. They wanted them to leave, leave our country, leave us alone. But, you know, they are so much in debt. They had like stuck. I know a Nigerian prince that writes me all the time and has plenty of money to bet them out of debt. <laughs> <laughs> Bill, we need money. Where do I send it to? Doesn't uh, that Nigerian know, prince need money though? Wasn't that? No, no, no. He's got the money, and if you wire you him your oh. bank account numbers, oh, okay. he'll That's deposit good. the money in there. Yeah. <laughs> Needs so, to make bombs. <laughs> so let me ask you, Alex, what do you think about Mike Bloomberg jumping into the race? You've been a New Yorker for, for a while. Well, you I think would I, 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 I'm not a big fan, okay? Uh, I think he did, in his first two terms, he did okay as, as mayor. I think in his third term, he proved the adage, don't give a person in New York a third term. You know, because they, they, A, they run out of ideas and they kind of take that as a act of uh, uh, bestowing upon them a certain regalness, you know. Uh, I, I think that's him. And I'll tell you why. Have you listened to some of his commercials? The guy talks like an elitist. Like uh, he, he is talking uh, in, in a way that he's part of the intelligentsia and he is not speaking to the people he's speaking to well, if, his if, own if, if, thing. If, if, if speaking to the people means you have to be dumb and sound like Trump well, yeah then yeah. I suppose but no well I'm I, you know I don't know Work that uh, that, uh, that I particularly want to vote for somebody who is uh, dumbs himself down in order to be look good to no, the people but he, he it, it's he sounds like an elitist. Uh, and he's well, only he going to is, appeal to is, New York it, well, and California. Well, he is partially an elitist. He's got a lot, uh, a fuckload of money. He he could buy and sell Trump about fifty times. Yeah. Okay. Uh, 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 so with with all that money, he is an elitist. But he started out as opposed to Donald Trump with nothing. It's self, it's with self-made. nothing. Zero. Well, and, and and that's exactly the way Steyer is is campaigning as well. His latest commercial is the same damn thing. Yeah. Steyer's and, and, only statement is, "I hate Trump. Don't uh, vote for me." Yeah, and... but he his uh, the commercial I saw tonight was exactly that. It was, I built my you know you know, Trump is a phony. He's he's spent all his money. He he's you know left people hanging. He's spent his you know he he's done his uh, casinos and he's bankrupted them all. I've built it from the bottom up. I still got my money. The whole bit. That's what Steyer's building his campaign. Yeah, on. and 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 Bloomberg's probably will be. I got more of it than he does. The same yeah, thing. Yeah, exact you know. same thing. Uh, yeah. Well, no. And the, what's the, Warren got to say? Well, about well no. The point is that if and, if and, people and, voted for Trump because they thought he was good with money and that he would handle the finances of this country well, uh, Bloomberg certainly got him beat. You know. Well, Trump, yeah. Trump is spending like uh, a drunken sailor. This is true. Uh, you know, he said something bad about him. Wait. Oh, no, well, it's true. You know, it's not bad. It no, just I, I, to be for, true. you forgot. Oh, exactly. Phil likes cool. drunken sailors because they're the only <laughs> ones who will blow him. Anyway, go ahead. <laughs> but uh, you know, uh, you know, I like Trump. Uh, I just don't think Bloomberg's in touch with uh, the people. He, I, I don't believe what the words that are coming out of his mouth. I don't think, look, I don't think he, him entering into this fray enhances the, the whole thing. On the other hand, who the fuck have the Democrats got? You Nothing. know, you've got a damaged a person in Joe Biden. You've yes. got, uh, you've got a, a, a somewhat uh, uh, too far to the left Bernie Sanders and too far to the left uh, Elizabeth Warren. So there is a place in all of this. And Buttigieg it is not. not going to get the black vote. Well, 
he, he's he, not going to get any. And they more. say that you need the black vote to to win the Democratic. It, it, uh, to say that he doesn't have the black vote is to underestimate the black community. Uh, I, I think that it's it's somewhat racist to think that they're necessarily anti-gay. Yes, they're very church going, but so is he. You know, uh, he is far more religious. Buttigieg than any of the other candidates, and that might appeal to some of those black families who otherwise would go, "Yeah, but he's gay." Well, but he's you know he does go to church every Sunday. Why is he doing so poorly in South Carolina? Because I don't think he, I don't I don't think he's worked very hard to win over South Carolina. Yeah, he, might, I think have, he might have something up his sleeve to pull out later on. Because he, I think he's looking to make it in Iowa and Vermont where he's leading, and once he does that. He New can Hampshire. then walk into New some uh, New Hampshire, rather. After that, he can go into all those other states and use that as his as his uh, uh, cachet. Uh, I think uh, Buttigieg has a better shot at winning this election than almost anybody else who's running right now. Did you hear what Yang said? Uh, you know, he says, you know, when he's out in the in the states campaigning. He's not hearing anything about impeachment. He says people are asking about the economy. They're asking of, uh, 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 about a number of things, but in, in, in safety. Impeachment is not on their mind. And uh, I think you have most of these other ones are running against Trump and running in, uh, for impeachment. And that's it, it, it. Supposedly it polled 11 out of 11. Uh, that for, doesn't matter, uh, Phil. It doesn't matter what impeachment is doing is damaging the Trump brand. I don't know. It's, it's, well, I think it's solidifying his base. It's starting to make some people have some serious questions about his ethics. And why did, why did his, uh, his, uh, thing go up 10 points? What thing? Uh, uh, his, um, his, uh, po uh his, um, Appro not like ability, approval but, uh, rating, approval rating, his yeah. approval rating didn't go up, Phil, unless you want to go believe some, something like, uh, What's that one poll that is always... Rasmussen? Rudge poll. Huh? R Rasmussen? Rudge poll? Rasmussen. No. Yeah. Rasmussen. Yeah. I mean, uh, Rasmussen would say he's got like 70% approval rating. Oh, fine. Thank you, Rasmussen. Well, it's all you know, the one that also said he was going to win the election. <laughs> so, you know. It was interesting. I was watching the uh, rally for about 10, you know, nauseating minutes today on uh, Fox. What rally was that? It was the one down in uh, Sun Sunrise, Florida, was it tonight? Really? Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. And I was looking at the 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 crowd behind him, mm -hmm. and I swear to God, I saw three people at least that were there in other crowds, and this one particular black guy, he's got to be being paid to follow him around. He's got <laughs> glasses on his head. He always wears black voices were for Trump. And yeah. then there was another group on the left that said Latino voices for Trump. And then there was another one that said Jesus for Trump. Uh, and uh, uh, these people must be, they must be paid for by him to be behind him. Didn't you, uh, I, I know you freelance and you do the Santa stuff. You could probably, you know, uh, try to get a job with uh, rent a black guy for Trump. Well I, you know. I, well, I do that, you know, with elves and stuff, you know. <laughs> yeah. Imagine a black no, Santa but I mean, I, I watched black it for Santa's a few minutes, and Trump. I just sat there and watched him. And, and to see him talk the way he was talking, it was evangelistic. Really? It was definitely, and I sat there and I went, now I, I put him into a, a Joel... Elstein, Olstein, or whatever Olstein. the hell his name is. Olstein. Olstein. I, I, I took him out of that place and put Joel Olstein in there, and it was exactly the same thing. And it was almost like a cult thing going on. And I'm going, this is happening again. And he just he just literally, he, he, he grabs those people's brains and puts them. Did, did you order the free Golden Cross? That's that's about it. <laughs> You know, and he's up there talking smack That's and shit, it. and there's that Jesus lady sitting behind her laughing when he's saying bullshit, you know, and, and t talking shit up there. And I'm going, this is like watching, you know, pretty soon he's going to be asking for money and and everything else. And it, 
it, it I, was pretty scary watching it. I get no less than six emails a day uh, asking me to donate money to Trump. Uh, they they haven't seen my name on his birthday card. They haven't, uh, yeah, you know, you so, voted for him, so you're going to get that. It's yeah. uh, it comes from the it comes from the government. I, I voted for him and I gave money. Yeah. yeah, well, that's all it takes. But you know, it, yeah. it it just looked really evangelistic to me, and I was going, you know, this is this is scary shit watching him do this, and and these people, and every once in a while they would pan to the crowd, and some of them were just sitting there staring at him, but, yeah. and the other ones behind him were all rah rah. But you got to understand, people, they pan to the crowd for two seconds, and they only did it a couple of times. They were sitting there, you know, stone faced. That's why he got elected because he's able to communicate to these people. Whether you agree, whether whatever you whatever you think of those people, those are the ones that are pulling the lever for Trump. And if you don't think that uh, he should talk to those people, that's what's going to get him elected again. Well, I I understand that, Phil, but that that's that's what's scary about it. He's he's he's. He's in. He he's getting into those people's heads. Those are the and same. They 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 say, those are the the same people, say, Phil. Those are the same people, Phil, who allowed Hitler to get into power and allowed Mussolini no, to get not into I'm power. I'm trying to stay away from that, Alex. I'm trying to stay away from that, but it sure as hell looks. Well, yeah, you may yeah. try to place that equate. You know, equate that uh, or have an equivalency. No, but, it, there's no equivalency, uh, Phil. I'm saying that the reason that Hitler that, came to power was stupid people. The tactics worked. He's trying to get elected. He's using and, Hitler's tactics. Well, let tactics me tell you, when it correct, comes to Bill. selling, I mean, what are those rallies? But 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 Hitler rallies that he's holding. It, no, no, no. There's no equivalency there. He's just doing. Yes, a, there's a, an what, equivalency what there. What it takes to get elected. No, he's. Look, he's, I'm telling he, you, in sales, you have to dance to the music played. If a customer's doing the but, waltz, you can't do the cha cha. But you know, Phil, he's been doing this for three years. Why does he have to do it for three years? You, because an he election started. Period. He started his reelection the day after he exactly. was elected. That's he said called, he was. And that's all he, he cares he about. And that's all he cares about, Phil. Well, he declared. No, he's doing a smart thing. But really? if you want him I, to I win, don't. which I do, uh, he's doing, doing this, what he needs to do. If you're doing do. the smart thing, you're doing your job, and then you come back at the end of your job and you say, look what I did here. No, you don't sit out there and talk shit the whole time no, to try he, and keep people involved to, with you. I don't want to That's all he's this done. conversation, but he had you to know, do that because he had so many people trying to say a, a different narrative about what he was doing. Ah. So he tries to get his narrative out, and everyone else is trying to silence but him. The only narrative he's doing is calling people names all day. Well, maybe that's that his style. Crap. I don't like I don't like that. A lot of people don't like it. But you know, I, I also don't want to dominate say, this ah, All right, yeah. Well, that's what I that's say. what I don't understand. Let's get Sibby's opinion on this since he's uh he's the other oddly enough conservative here who is kind of a fallen conservative, right? Well, <laughs> you know, the thing is, you know, he has thirty three to thirty five percent locked in, but you don't get get to be president with thirty five percent of the vote. And I'm assuming Democrats have about 40% locked in for whatever. It's just the fight for the the, the you know 25%, and that's that's where the the whole swing vote comes in. And I do feel that Michael Bloomberg is a good candidate, but I don't know. Yeah. I I feel that Joe Biden is is damaged goods. At this time, what he should do is for the good of the country. I'm dropping out because my name is in the the whole impeachment thing, and my son. So I want him to come and testify. He should, you know, show that you know he's sacrificing his chance for the good of the country. Well, you want to know he something. Well, that. you want to know something. What's he interesting? Should. What's very interesting is Trump did what he did with uh, the Ukraine uh, and with that call to try mm-hmm. and uh, sully Biden's yeah. reputation. Out of court. And yeah. what he let me finish, oh, Phil. Yeah. And, and what he managed to do was sully Biden's reputation just by inference. In other words, because Biden is in the center of this, the questions are being asked even though 
what Trump was doing was to try and get those goods on him. Now he doesn't even have to get the goods on him. The, yeah. the, the smear has been put on Biden, and he is, he is uh, he's, uh, uh, literally uh, bad goods. You know, he, is, he, he, he can't absolutely. win. He can't win. And he no, brought that up at the rally tonight. What did he say? He, he brought up Biden, and he called him, uh, what about Sleepy Joe? And then what about, uh, he said, I call him, where is Hunter Biden? That's what I call him now. Where is Hunter Biden? Yeah, well, you he know something? Even need here, to bring it up. Here is where Trump is making his very big mistake. Mm. Biden is not going to be the nominee of the party. No. It's, okay? He's, he's All right. In on so what? What he's not doing is he's not keying in on just the whole Democratic Party and and the whole the whole group. And so he's making Biden. If they throw if they throw, let's say, Buttigieg at him, Mm. what what's going to be his defense against Buttigieg? And and that's true. And I think that's that's a key point, because I think that with the whole impeachment thing, I mean, to me. I don't know that the Democrats didn't step on their own dicks when they when they had this whole impeachment hearing and then all of a sudden we had this break because everybody's going to lose in t- you know attention on this thing. Mm-hmm. All of a sudden they had this break and things are going to drop off and that may be why someone came up with a 10 point approval raising rating or whatever uh for Trump this last <laughs> poll thing they did. But yeah. Now that they, you know, they had all these hearings and all of a sudden now they're all on a break and there's Thanksgiving and everything's going to die off. And then they're going to come back, what, next week or whatever, and, and everything's going to get started up again. And then all of a sudden they're going to go back to Christmas break and all yep. this stuff's going to die off. The Democrats may lose a lot of ground doing that. And they may have stepped on their own wieners doing that. Can I say something? Yeah, sure. Yeah. You know, I was reading and following a little bit of Bloomberg, and I, I think he's running ads in certain key states for the Democrats. And in the ads, as far as I read, they're really he's really pointing to the finger of the inaccuracies of Trump. Instead of instead of Warren and Bernie standing, he's part of the party. Instead of us trying to say he's a billionaire, she's doing too much class warfare. Bloomberg's not going to win, but he's actually helping them running these anti-Trump yeah. ads. Instead of ripping Bloomberg apart, he's not going to beat you, Warren or Sanders. She's too stupid to see this. He's got 2%. He's not going to beat her. Instead of ripping Bloomberg apart, look at the negative ads he's running against Trump, and you should be taking that as a key. How can I make this work for me? Is she that stupid and Bernie that they don't see this? Also, the he's exempt That's from what I know. the— uh, He's from not the, the threat. He's hurting Trump. He can he can advertise. Okay, let me let me let me say something, Phil, that I'm yeah. reading here. Uh, tweet it, Trump tweeted, "Support the impeachment is dropping like a rock, down into the twenties in some polls." Dem, and this is where you got your information, by the way, Phil. Where did I? Dem get? should yeah. now get uh, get down to work and finally improve the USMCA and much more. It turns out that he was not able to quote a single poll that had so he that just statistic. Threw that up he was then making he used the Hungarian. He was making he was making <laughs> up a statistic. Yeah, he, you're okay. right. Where's they his link to? Where is he reading it of what poll? This is the Trump in his mind. It's the one that he likes the best. I mean, he's he's makes up stuff. overall overall impeachment is slightly under 50%. Oh, according to him, yeah. but it was over 50 for a while. Trump always runs in the forties. No, well, this is just on the on the question of impeachment. Okay. So as soon as you get Nadler back, yeah. he he has got one of the he is so unlikable. Uh, he you know and you know I I guess Schiff isn't very likable either, especially to Republicans. Well, I think but, Schiff is very likable. Yeah, maybe to you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, to me. Kevin did a good Schiff. <laughs> do you do Jeff? Do you find Schiff okay? Does he bother you at all? No, you, you don't have your mic on. How about how about you, Sibby? How do you feel about? I think Adam it's terrific. Schiff? I think I think he's he's not bad. I if you were to compare him with Jim Jordan, you know who's oh better. Jim oh. Jim Jordan I with Jim Jones. Jim, uh, you know the the thing about Schiff is he makes shit up. 
You you complain yeah. about Trump. Schiff, Schiff is reading stuff into the congressional record that has nothing to do with reality. Says who? Says you know he he suppose he, he says Schiff. He even he apologized oh, for it. Fine. His voice is cracking. <laughs> yes, yeah. he went up. <laughs> well, his voice is cracking. Phil knows he doesn't it's believe what he's saying. Uh, and, and, you're, and you're 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 an expert of uh, voice uh, analysis. Okay. Yes, I am. As a matter of no, fact. I'm talking to Tony. Oh, uh, Tony. Uh, no, but I know my mother's lying to me, and I can see his eyes moving a little bit. Phil, <laughs> Phil belongs to 35 percent. There's no way he's gonna sway. His his vote is secure for Trump. Absolutely. Uh, and, I, and, Democrats, and I would vote for Trump over over. You know, I would like to see a Jew in the White House. But I, I don't think that Bloomberg is. Uh, you no, know, no, I, mean, I look. I, don't know I, I Jew that I would vote for. I am just. Trump. I'm not satisfied with Bloomberg. Okay. I mean, he's not going to win. He's a but smart at least he's guy. Trump. He's Trump, he's run. Good. He's run the largest city in America. He has the money to finance his campaign beyond financing. But he's the giving problem is Bloomberg. He's helping. They don't well, you know it. what? You know what? Marjorie said this, and she was absolutely right. Whatever money he was going to spend on his own campaign, he should give to whoever the nominee is. In in a way, that's what he's doing. I tried to say earlier that uh, well, he's exempt. Tony, wait a minute. He's exempt from PACs. Uh, you see, PACs pay more money than an individual has to pay on his own campaign, number one. Number two, he's exempt from the campaign spending laws uh, that uh, that he's doing. So he can pump in a lot more money uh, than uh, than uh, PACs and other things that uh, ha do advertising uh, mm -hmm. for the candidates. Now, what he's doing is he is sending out an anti-Trump message, uh, and uh, maybe that's his intention all along is to is to try to hurt Trump. But I think his ego is going to get in the way, and he'll want to have the office. And, uh, you know, I don't know that he'd do a bad job, but I don't agree with a number of the stances that he has, the anti-gun and, and so forth. But when it came to running uh, New York, he was stop and frisk, and he was even more aggressive with it than, than Well, Giuliani he's apologized was. for that. Well, because he thought he had to. Every Democrat's been apologizing. For Phil, the, Phil, uh, Beto uh, uh, hey, hey, Phil, for Phil, Phil, supremacy. at least yeah. he apologized. Trump has never apologized for anything, no matter how wrong yeah. he's been. Because I'm Trump is not a loser like those guys. He's, no, no, being a he's loser, a, being a loser <laughs> and uh, is is not the An same. apologist. It, 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 oh. All I'm saying is, is that by not apologize, you, you should be able to apologize now and then. It shows no. the metal yeah. of the person. Uh, Obama immediately after he was elected uh, apologized to the uh, to the countries in the Middle East. Egyptians. Uh, the, he, he, you know, he was an apologist. He's known as an apologist. Uh, you know, uh, sh uh, and then uh, Beto O'Rourke and a number of other ones, they're all apologizing. Uh, you know what happened with the yeah, Me but Too Trump, movement. But Trump they doesn't apologize. apologize. They, they Trump doesn't it. apologize when he should, Phil. I know, but yes. if you if Trump apologized, they would take that as meat to a to a rabid dog, and they would go after him like nobody's tomorrow. If he apologizes, you know something. For anything, I would say if he if he apologized well, for that's something because of the way he's conducted himself. No, what about these other guys that didn't do anything wrong, like Beto O'Rourke or uh, Obama? The thing they're, is, they're the thing apologists. is, if he apologized for something, I think it would so unnerve people, and they wouldn't know what to do. If he apologized, no, uh, no, they would That's jump on it. Just like the it. same reason he's never going to quit either. He'll yeah. never resign. Yeah, they they would jump on that, and they would look at it as a weak chink in the armor, and they would go right after. He said chink. That's right. You said chink. <laughs> yeah. yeah what, what, what's a, a chink? Is what the chain? Right in a week. Weak chain. Yeah, sure, piece. Phil. Sure. Or uh, uh, yes, uh, uh, Sibby. Sibby. I paid Friday. Yeah, I. I've, you know, I always felt this, that if Trump wins the 2020 elections, I believe that there won't be, there won't be any more 2024 elections because he's going to create situations where he's going to say that, you know, the situation in this country is so bad or whatever it is for the security of the, the, the opposing candidate, whatever, we'll have to postpone the election. And the court no, is going to go with that. him. Martial the law. Court, Martial law. Court, no, the court is going to go with him. He's going to pack the court. 
I can see it happening because Trump right. knows that the moment he leaves the presidency, he's going to be in trouble. That he's court, not going to vacate. The court has gone against him and on several on several things. I don't think that the, what the, Phil uh, I made, what huh? what recently. Uh, Recent. Some immigration uh, uh, policies really? and so forth. Really? What, yeah. Which ones? I didn't which hear one? that. He's going to get one more. I've heard about some of the other courts, the point. lower courts yep. doing it, but I haven't heard about the Supreme Court Entirely doing it. Entirely possible. He's running around He's running around talking about Article 2, Article 2, Article 2. The president can do yes. anything he wants. Yes. And then and that, and he gets the court. Boy, he's going to have all kind of power, isn't he? Let me, let I, me tell I you. So. Let You're probably you right, Sibby. Let me let me tell me one one more reason. He's gonna he's gonna get one more vacancy in the Supreme Court, and he's gonna. I believe that he's gonna pack someone like a Janine Pierre or someone as, as a Supreme Court judge. Oh, that's the judge Janine. He likes her. She's done. What are you gonna do? It's gonna be complete majority for him. He's done. It, if 2020 election is it doesn't go against him, he's gonna be the president for life. I I truly believe that. That's just scary that shit. I, think all you know, I guess you guys are lucky he's older. <laughs> all you need is a court. And by the way, when you said earlier that he would go after uh, uh, Buttigieg for being too young, Buttigieg could turn around and say, but you're too old. That is true, yeah. Yeah, but he could say, I've been doing the job and the people love me. <laughs> no, only 40% of the, only 35% of the people love you. The rest of us hate your fucking guts. Well, that 35% was 63 million that voted for him. And, uh, big poll. Yeah. How about the 66 million that didn't? Yeah. Well, luckily for Trump, the Democrats never get out of bed on an election day. No, what happened, and, what happened to Trump, they did get out of bed. The fact is it was the wrong ones that got out of bed in the wrong <laughs> states. And the fact that the Democrats weren't good as gerrymandering as the Republicans were. Well, I guess we're still good at it. Well, that's, that's not, you can't, I can't feel comfortable with that. I don't know about yeah. you. Yeah. You know. I'm sure you'll get your ticket for the inauguration. Huh? You'll you'll get your ticket for the inauguration. Well, I can go. I just yeah. show up and hang out there, you know. By the way, quickly, do you hear that Trump is inviting all the people that he likes to have a weekend at Camp David? <laughs> Who's he like? Well, well, no, there's our dime being spent to feed Republicans, you know. I wonder if they got not, did you see him not want to touch the dog yesterday too? Really? Uh, no, no. What's his name? Touch the dog. The vice president. There was yeah, a lot of petting. He, he liked the dog, but the Pets. Trump didn't want nothing to do with him. No, oh, really? You know, I didn't see that. There's even a dog in the White House. He doesn't have. Yeah, a dog. I know. I didn't see yeah, that. It's so un-American. He can't have a pooch. But I, I, you know, I think Pence was was pulling the dog. You know, the the whole time. Trump said something about a muzzle, and he says, "Nah, the dog doesn't need a muzzle." He says, I, I, "No, the dog would get worse with a muzzle." He didn't know shit about that. Dog. I was hoping and praying <laughs> that so, I was Trump hoping and praying that fucking dog would bite him. I yeah. was hoping he'd take a leak. Huh? <laughs> I was hoping he was going to lift his leg and take a piss on him. Or I don't think yeah. that happens yeah. with those dogs. No, it's not his leg. It's a it's a female dog. It's a pet. Hey, listen, oh, okay. uh, we, we've run out and of time. And then one of, the, one of the reporters says, you're going to adopt the dog for Baron? <laughs> anyway, uh, uh, I'm running out of time here, uh, both uh, on this program and I guess in, in <clears throat> life in general. Uh, so, you know. You're going to be fine. Um, I'll I'm, be fine. I, 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 that's what they've all said so far, and so far they've all been wrong. I, no, you don't have cancer. It, it really? You know? So the, the first urologist was right. He wanted to give you a uh, biopsy months ago. Yes, but he would have immediately taken extreme measures to solve the problem, and I didn't want that. I wanted a doctor I could trust. And I've got yeah. one I can trust. Everybody, yeah, I got to say you quickly, go. uh, uh, Tony, uh, Sippy, Abby, uh, 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 Phil, uh, 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 Kev Kevin, and Jeff, all wave a big wave goodbye because I got to get the fuck out of here, okay? Bye-bye. Okay, there they go. Here we go. Okay, there we go. All righty. Uh, let me uh, let me hang up on these fine folks here and uh, get the lines ready. For the next program, which will be coming up here, which will be uh, the, uh, the uh, uh, what is it? Oh, it's the intersection, Jack Bishop. Uh, we'll be back again here tomorrow night. 
Uh, same time. But last show of the week, by the way. You know, uh, last show of the week. But same time, same station in life. And in the meantime, uh, if you see her, yeah, you know what to do. As always, tell her I love her, okay? Bye-bye, everybody.